the cloud. Here we go. This meeting is being recorded. All right. Shall I start off? I'm Bobby. <laughs> uh, just say your full name and which organization. Bobby DeBella, town of Glastonbury. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Bob John Lee Rutka, Hartford Jet. Oh, sorry. Lindsay Rutka, Hartford Jet. Next. John Moody, Connecticut Airport Authority. Thank you. Bob Pellegrino, Connecticut Airport Authority. Thank you. Vivian Keene, Weathersfield resident. Pat is Weathersfield resident. Hey. We have anybody else? Okay. Um, if everybody takes a look at the minutes, if you need a few minutes to read through, but um, when you're ready, if we have a motion or if there's any changes, a motion to accept. Uh, Bonnie, if I may add, this is, uh, this is Bobby. I like to say because of technical difficulties, I haven't been able to get into the last two meetings and uh, that's probably the only two I've missed in 40 years. I like that in the minutes, so, I mean, please. Okay, I can add that. Thank you very much, I appreciate it. Try to do better, uh, get on video. All right, any other changes or is there a motion to accept with that amendment? Yep, make a motion to accept. Is there seconded. a second? Yep, seconded. All right, all those in favor with the amendment? Say aye. Aye. Thank you. Opposed, abstentions? All right, Mr. Moody, you're on. And we did email you everybody the noise complaints and the operations, John. Thank you very much for doing that. Um, as, I, uh, as for activity, all right, for, for January uh, 2022, we had uh, 4,111 flights. February 2022, we had 4,257 flights. And in March, we had 5,156 flights. Uh, over the same period last year, we had a 28% increase over the same period last year. Complaints, uh, total complaints for January uh, 2022 were 42. February uh, 2022, we had 36. And in March 2022, we had 21. Uh, the total number of complaints, we had 99 complaints total. Um, of those 99 complaints, uh, five of them were Middletown residents. Uh, and mm -hmm. we don't believe that those, those belong to Hartford, but since they were called in, we still have to count them. Uh, is, that Roy, something, um, is that something different, John? No, no. I'll, 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 um, uh, it, what happens is, um, when I work at Bradley, you know why that that to happen? Yep. When, I worked at, when I worked at Bradley, we had that a lot. People don't know where to call in the noise complaints. So oh, they, oh, I the got you. So they, just, they, they finally get some number, and then they, they start using that one. Okay. Um, uh, the noise calls, um, for January, we had a total of, of um, 16 calls. In February, we had 10 calls. And in March, we had 18 calls for a total of 44 total calls total. Uh, and then uh, the last piece of information on there is it came from 16 different locations. Um, and then except for two were Middletown calls. So really we had 14 calls, location calls. Uh, the next thing I'll, I'll talk about is the project that's going on currently is the Ash Lagoon. Um, repair, uh, not the repair, the filling in of the Ash Lagoon. Uh, that work's continuing and they're estimating and finishing that project on June 15th. And most of that work is being done at night. Okay, questions for John? Well, I have one. Sure. 
Go ahead. Uh, John, uh, in a presentation recently, uh, and I can't remember whether it was uh, where the, I think it was at the town hall, somebody from uh, the CAA said that there was only one person who was calling in all of the complaints. Um, where did that come from? Because I know it's not true. <clears throat> uh, I'm not, I'm not familiar with that, with that, that meeting. I wasn't there. So it'd be hard for me to comment on that. Um, I do know in the last meeting that we had that got brought up and, um, I think in the period before in the, the last meeting, there were, um, uh, last year's numbers, uh, someone had mentioned that, that a lot of the calls had come from a small number of houses and one house in particular had a high amount of calls. Um, you know, and that's, you know, it's just- Well, that was erroneous information because I know that there's never been a time where just one person would be calling all during the period of time. Well, like I said, like, like what the way I, I spelled it out here on this chart, not on this chart, but on this thing, the total number of calls we've taken, and then the, from those calls, how many of those locations are the same, the same location? You know what I mean? So um, it varies. You know, I, I you know, you know, uh, the last, last, the last report we had a lot more um, complaints. I think I think the complaints went down, in in that. That, that, that kind of correlates with the winter months. Well, also, it correlated with people just getting really, really tired of calling yep. and not getting anything done. No. I understand. <clears throat> yeah, John, there's a bad haze here. Just put in a, a here, here on that. Um, a lot of us are really tired of calling and we've all taken turns and you know we always feel like it's somebody else to get attention. And to ask for help from the airport when it's a problem that recurs and we know the pilots are buzzing our houses. So I took the last two quarters off. I apologize. I really meant to show up at the meeting last time, but there's a lot of us who are just, you know, have had enough. We're hoping others in the neighborhood will do the round robin, you know, participate more, but. So I hope that's noted in the minutes. Will do. Any other questions or comments for John or anybody? John, John this is Bobby D. Hi. Hi, just a quick question. Were any of those calls from Glastonbury, sir? Uh, in the last three months, we had no calls from Glastonbury. Thank you, sir. Anyone else? I'd like to say that um, as far as the uh, calls coming in, I, I am now I'm the manager at the airport. Um, I'm there every day and I am returning phone calls and I'm trying to do our part and what we need to do, you know. Um, I I call people back. I leave messages because most a lot of the times I don't even get an answer. But mm -hmm. I just want people to know that I am reaching out and you know trying to do our due diligence and trying to be a good neighbor. Thank you, um, Bob. Let me, let me just say since it's my last meeting and I've done this before. <laughs> And this has been going on a long time. I think the biggest thing, Bob, is that if there's a, a somebody who's offending, and especially if you get the, the plane number and all that, and I think the biggest thing, too, is just that somebody is talking to these people to say, and I know you can't force them, but to say, please follow the, other, follow the route that's, you know, outlined to stay away from old Weathersfield. I think that's the biggest thing that really gets people. Well, I could touch on that because sure. one of the uh, phone calls, um, I actually got a picture of the aircraft. They, it came to my work phone. And 
the next day I went on the airfield, I found the aircraft. They actually were taxiing out after I found them. And I gave a call to the tower and I asked the tower to please let the pilot know to be aware of the noise sensitive area and try to be a good neighbor. And the tower reached out and you know it was relayed. So, I mean, when I do get information like that and I can act on it, I definitely am calling the tower. Right. And I'm in communication. You know, we're, we're trying to make things better. I mean, but we're not going to get rid of the airport, but we're trying to make things better. You know, mm -hmm. maybe now that I'm the manager and I'm there every day, unfortunately, Matt had two airports he was managing, so he wasn't there every day. I am. So I'm trying to do my part and be a good neighbor and do what we can. So I just want you guys to know that. And what information Wait. would be helpful if somebody called and left you a message, what information, if they can get it, would be helpful to help well, you? Like, like, uh, like if, if they're looking up at the aircraft, uh, this lady told me that the wing tips had, it was green stripe, green stripes yep. around the wing tips. So it's something that I can go on the airfield and look for. I mean, most of the aircraft are white underneath. So, you know, it's hard to distinguish them. Right. If you get a tail number, mm -hmm. if they're that close, you know, obviously that helps too, but you know. Uh, time and date helps the most. Yeah. Time and date. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's Sometimes what we've been given. Times and dates and um, uh, the color of the airplane. And I mean, if you can get the tail number, that's great, but uh, that's going to be hard, to be honest with you. Um, that, that's just going to be hard. But if you do get it, it does help. So, Bob, can I just ask you a question? Uh, yep. So, that pilot, was he local or she local? They were part of um, Learn to Fly. And like I said, the tower reached out to him. And well, after maybe that, incident, now, maybe now it would be good if you reached out to them uh, personally well, and said, you're not welcome here. Yeah. <laughs> well, here I was going to, what I was going to say is after that incident, me and John talked and we're going to set up an appointment with, with the flight schools again, just me and John. And we're going to discuss, you know, the noise sensitive area and we're going to reiterate you know the flight path that we'd like them to take mm -hmm. obviously sometimes weather conditions we all know that sometimes they can't follow that but you know if 90 percent of the time they can follow that that's what we're what our goal is so um i can't tell them you know I leave the airport you know, that's something that we can't do well, if they're a chronic abuser <laughs> well a chronic abuser we could we can talk to them uh, John, you have any input on that? Well, yeah. I mean, w unfortunately, like what Bob says, we don't have the power to say no to an airplane. All right. It's actually against the law to do that. You know, we could be sued. You know, if I, if I tried to restrict an airplane from coming into the airport and it's a legal airplane, we could be sued for that. Um, um, but going forward like bob said um we, you know we plan on doing more meetings with the flight schools uh um we're working on getting more uh of the flyers made up to have handed out mm -hmm. in uh, that, that that there is that shows the their approach um and one of the things that i'm doing personally for myself is i'm trying to learn more about I'm not a pilot. Uh, I'm trying to learn more about that. You know what I mean? Um, so that I can try to understand it better, understand the problem with them. You know, why can't they do this? You know, you know, like we, you have one side of the group saying one thing, you get the other side of the group saying the other thing. Um, so I want to learn both sides of it. And I think once I learn both sides of it, uh, you know, we maybe come up with, you know, some kind of compromise or, you know, work together, you know, I don't think, you know, like Bob said, I don't think we're going to stop all the airplanes from flying over Weathersfield. Um, if we can reduce it, that would help, I think. Um, and that's our goal. Hey, this hey, is Bob. Lindsay. Barbara. Um, if you guys can see this flyer that we have right here. Not really. <laughs> so how about there? Is that a I better? recognize it. Yeah. 
I recognize oh, there you. Go. Wait, wait. So these flyers that uh, at each of the buildings, we've given these to the schools, and we also have them on the tables, and they're posted uh, pretty much everywhere to, to make sure that they are so reconnaissant about as they are flying, they're taking off, especially in the uh, in the direction of Weathersfield uh, uh, area to uh, to try to follow that river as closely as possible. So hopefully in the near future that there might be uh, some provisions that we're going to work with the school. And as Bob and John have talked about, um, I like to see that this is handed to them as they're being signed up or, or each day that they do fly that they have a copy of this um, as they are, uh, you know, as they're going up for their their flight lessons. So, I think we're all working on it. I think it looks a little bit better. I take it. Um, always got to keep striving on trying to avoid uh, the weather's field there. And, and um, this like is to... Bobby Debella. I'd oh. like to speak. This is Bobby Debella. I'd like to interject, please. Yeah, go ahead, Bobby. We got a, two Bobs here, so you go. Bobby okay. DeBella, go first. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Madam Chairman. You know, I've been on this for a long time, and I've had the opportunity in the past six months to visit Old Waters Hill, stay on my river bank at our Riverfront Community Center, and look in the air here. And I was quite interested in what I was seeing. I was seeing planes in myriad directions in and out of this airport. I could tell they're going in and out because it's easy. Uh, but they're they're not following the procedure that we laid out a long time ago, and it's in it's in that procedure that we wrote. We we wrote that many years ago, almost twenty years ago, I think. Now, mm -hmm. it seems to me at this point in time, folks, that the variable here is the tower is not involved with us at all I, I'm, I'm serious I, I, that might be stark to most of you but years ago we had a tower representative right here and he was he was getting the word to his employees I know it's a it's a contract tower I understand that but I think I think we really need to focus in on the tower people uh, in terms of noise abatement we had it way back where did it go the representative from the uh, FAA, uh, from, from that tower. I think we should probably try to get it back again. I think that would be a significant uh, impasse in our in our negotiations here because it's it seems to be getting worse. To be honest with you, uh, and I I really feel some people here it, in Wethersfield primarily. Go ahead, I'm through. I'm, I'm gonna I'm just gonna say um, I am in direct contact with the tower manager. And the tower manager is on board with the noise sensitive area. All his tower operators on the radio, they, they do mention the noise sensitive area and ask the aircraft to follow the river in and then come in, you know, take the dog leg left for their approach to the runway. Um, it's on the ATIS. They put it on every day about the noise sensitive area. And the pilots are supposed to look at the charts to see the path that, that we are recommending for the noise sensitive area to avoid it. Um, the I'm tower is on board with this. I just want you to know, I know that Daryl's well, not here right now, but I am in contact sure. with Daryl every day. I just want you sure, guys to know that. So. I'm Bobby again. I'm certainly hope so. And I'm sure yes. you're doing your job. Don't, don't get me wrong, please. Well, no, they're definitely, they're think... definitely doing their job and trying to, to be good neighbors okay. and avoid the noise sensitive the area. Like, and There's got to be some rationale. There has to be some rationale to the fact that I see planes coming in and out of this airport while I'm in Old Wethersfield, and I when I'm in Glastonbury looking in, uh, I'm I'm perplexed. So that's the only thing I could go on. So there's got to be some sort of rationale for that. I'm so sorry. as far I know as about far, wind and so on. And so forth. One go thing ahead. that I have ahead, I'm finding out by making the phone calls and seeing the noise complaints and talking to the tower is it's not not the full percent but some of the percent is transient aircraft that are coming to Brainerd okay. because we're towered right. and for training purposes they need a towered airport and 
like I said, the tower's doing their due diligence. It's on the ATIS. Pilots are supposed to be listening to that. And that's how they get their information for where they're going. So, um, you know, that's not, they're not the big percent, but they are a small percent. So I just want to put that out there. I, I, in, in that respect, I, I, I'm, I'm not arguing with you, sir, at all. I, no, I know. Bobby, I'm not either. I'm not, a, I, God, I'm not arguing with you. I wanted some progress here. <laughs> but, but I, I really think really think we should focus in that area a little bit more to make sure that the two are working together, if you will, the tower and the, the pilots. I, I I'm it just seems to me that that's the variable here. As a function of the many years I've been here and on this committee. As Dr. King says, I've seen the other side and I have. <laughs> if I could say something, um, I've not, I don't know if it's been 40 years since I've been on the, this committee, but I've been on and off for at least 30 years. And right. 30 years ago, this, the complaints were almost identical. <clears throat> and that's true. Um, that's not progress. <laughs> so what are we doing wrong that it's not changing at all? And I have another question. What are the hours of the tower? Tower is manned from 6 a.m. to mid, uh, midnight. 6 a.m. to midnight? I didn't think it was even to, from mid till midnight. Okay. No, 6 a.m. to midnight. Public so, knowledge. Um, if a pilot comes in uh, after that, the, the, when the tower is unmanned, the airport goes into CTAF where the pilots, it's a tower frequency and they use their their mic to turn on the airfield lighting and they have to call themselves on the radio to make sure there's no other traffic coming in or out. Is the ADIS still on? Excuse me? Is the ADIS still functioning? Yes, the ADIS is on. 24 hours, okay. Yep. Well, the woman is right. This is Bobby again. Uh, I haven't seen much progress. And, and I'm, I'm perplexed as she is, and I'm, uh, I just like to try to be a tool to find a solution here. Thank you for my years of returns. I'll be standing by. Pat, did you have your no, hand no, up? I, yeah, right. Well, sort of a here here to what Bobby Devella was saying that um, it's still way too many offenders you know, yeah. loud and very <clears throat> often very low um, and um, inappropriate for for this neighborhood. But um, yeah, I look forward to working with Bob Pellegrino. Uh, if you're dedicated to this uh, airport, that will be an improvement uh, because when this airport manager was kind of charged with this function, tracking uh, the complaints and contacting the pilots, there was some, you know, that was sort of baked into your, you know, your job description back in probably 86 or 89 when the, uh, when the uh, FAA studies were done. But um, so I look forward to that. That's, you know, follow up is important. I, I am dedicated to the airport. I'm dedicated to being a good neighbor and whatever we can do to try to come to common ground is what, what my goal is. Obviously it's an airport. Um, you know, when planes take off to two zero and they have to get up to that certain elevation before they can even turn. I mean, you know, unfortunately an aircraft is limited to elevation and turns and all that. Especially so, a jet, yes. Mm -hmm. um, the tower is aware, you know, when the winds favor, they will have them come in on 2-0 and eliminate the whole Weathersfield area completely. But because of where the airport is located, most of the time the winds are favorable. <laughs> so they are, the tower will do their due diligence. I have talked to the tower manager. He reaches out to his, his staff, you know, and... You know, I just want you guys to be, I know the town manager isn't here, but I want you to know that I am contact with them every day. So I'm trying.
Did he have verbal contact with the planes? With the tower? Yeah. Yes, they're in communication yeah. with, the, with the aircraft, yes. So he can kind of tell that they're already on the wrong trajectory if they're, as they're coming in. Well, as they're coming in, once again, you have to understand that the pilot himself is in control of that aircraft. The tower can advise. They can't tell him to make an abrupt turn or, or something like that. You know, no, but whatever the winds are up a lot. I know it may not be windy at the ground, but when you get up 3,000 feet, it's a different. But different can, the, can the tower say to them, you know, we have a noise ordinance, a, yes, a noise I, sensitive I, area here. Please avoid I, old Weathersfield. I have heard it. I have heard the tower say that numerous times. Yes. And does it help? Yes, they, they listen to them. So they are, like I said, they are doing their due diligence. But so maybe instead of the canned message, they need to talk to them more. <laughs> like I said, there's a lot of variables in play with a pilot flying a plane, you know? No, I know, you know I, unfortunately. I wish I was a pilot and understood it even more. Like John said, he's gonna try to learn the pilot side of it. And I am too. I mean, in order to, to understand both sides, you should have a good understanding of the whole scheme of things. So, I mean, me and John are both on the same page. We want to learn more to, to help out more. You know, we do want to be good neighbors, you know. I'm sure you, I'm sure you are. I'm sure you are. I'm sure you're doing a good job. There's no question. I'm and we're going Bobby to invite you to Old Weathersfield to hear it from our side too. Right, Judy? Yes, so we tried to do that a couple of years ago, but the weather did not uh, work. So this right, summer, Julie, let's- I was with you there. Judy, I was with you there. I know. Um, I think that what we need to do is plan a day uh, or a couple of days so that weather can be accommodated. But yes, just sit in the yard or at any house here in Old Weathersfield. It could be on the green um, and see what's going on. May I interject? I this is Bobby. I think you're on a good move there. But uh, gentlemen, I know you're new to this thing, uh, this noise abatement thing here in Wethersfield, but please please answer this question. I, I find that there's absolutely no reason on earth why they should be, uh, you know, 100 or 200 feet above a house. That, that seems to be very caustic. That seems to be somewhat of a debacement and that's what these people are talking about. And I've witnessed it. I've witnessed it myself. I spend a lot of time in Old Wethersfield. I love it here. Older than Glastonbury. In fact, Glastonbury severed from Wethersfield in 1693. I love it over here. So I come over. And when I saw one or two planes, my God, it was less, less, it was less than 200 feet above rooftops there. Something wrong. Go ahead. Well, I, you know, I, I can't, I can't talk about what I, I wasn't there. You know what I mean? I'd have to see it in, in like t time and dates and, you know, we can try to, you know, picture it, you know, but you have to understand that, yeah. that. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. We've seen it. Uh, I'm not, I'm not doubting people it. Just spoke. No, We've what I'm it. saying is, what, what I'm yeah. saying is, is that. You know, when, when planes make their approach, all right, to the airport, um, it's a, like a, a steady uh, angle coming down. You know what I mean? It's not a, you know, you can't go like like a thousand feet and then just drop. It, it's got to be a steady incline down to the I, ground. I, I, you know I understand saying? that. I, I, you know, I understand that. And you know, but so there's got to be some, some point, sort of... You know, at some point they they are getting lower. You know what I mean? So you're right. Um, and at some point we might have a severe accident, and I want to try to avoid that. I'm in the public safety field for all my life, and I've been talking about it. My colleagues are, are on this uh, on this uh, voicemail here will confirm that I've spoken out it about it enough. Correct, gentlemen, ladies. Absolutely. Yep. yep. Thank you. It's, it's one thing to look into seriously. It's very, in fact, it's paramount, I think, at this point. It's paramount. 
I almost think if the airport is to remain, and uh, we'll find out about that, um, maybe the uh, landing, the uh, runways need to be shifted. They need to change direction so that people can land right off the river rather than uh, over Old Weathersfield. I know that would be expensive and a big deal, but you know, after all these years, something has got to change. And, and uh, unfortunately, nothing has. And, and, and in addition, removing the trash to energy uh, chimney stack would clear out some of the obstacles to those planes that are headed in that direction after we change the runway direction. Agreed. Thank you. Any Something other questions for John or Bob? All right. And the only other thing I had was just so you know, um, I, was I was telling Bob this earlier. Uh, this is my last meeting. Fred Presley, who is the new town manager, starts in May. And he will be at your next meeting July 28th. So um, uh, Pat and Judy and maybe... Bobby DeBella, it might be a good idea to call him in June or so and try to go through Cheryl and set up a meeting. So before the July meeting, he kind of knows, you know, what's happening. I mean, he could read minutes and all that, but still, I think it's better in person. Honey, we have a better we have suggestion. Zoom. We have I know. Zoom. Say He's that again. I'll do that. Welcome. Say that again, Judy. I'm sorry. I was going to say, let's have Fred sit on the green for yeah. a while. That, no, you know what? That'd be a good thing. So invite him down for a meeting and yep. sit on the green. Yep, I think so. He's that a great be guy. Good. He's been a manager. Um, I, you know, he loves, 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 loves him and his wife history. So he is, that's how we got him. If it wasn't for old Weathersfield, we never would have yeah. got him. Wow. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah. Good. That's what, when I took him on a tour and showed him that, that was it. This, that was his. He was going to get this job, but it was the last thing he did. Good. <laughs> Great. Great. Good. Um, What's his name, Bonnie, question. again, please? His name Bonnie, is Fred name? Presley. And so I need to remind myself to ask him if he's related to Elvis. <laughs> it's yeah. spelled well, the same. One more question oh. for Mr. Moody if the, if, on the Ash Lagoon filling project. There's one of two that are being filled in. And there's a lot of concern by some of our neighbors that if we fill in both of them and can pave over at least some part of it, that we will be enabling heavier planes to load up with gasoline. We're going to see many of the jets that are qualified now increase their usage here. Is that not a stated objective? Um. First of all, like like, like it's, I'll say, you're you're correct. We're, there's only one lagoon that's being filled in at this time, and that okay. is the one closest to the runway. The other lagoon is not on CAA property. That belongs still belongs to MDC. They own that. Uh, that's that's remaining. So that that lagoon right now is not in our control. Um, uh, what you're referring to is to like a a master plan type theory you know like you know looking out 10 20 years you know what do we see you know something like mm -hmm. that um but at this time the caa has no projects or plans uh of extending the runway um right now we're that at the end of that project that lagoon area is going to be just grass it's not going to be any pavement okay Okay, thank you. Let's we did a master plan about 10 years ago, folks. Mm -hmm. About 10 years ago, we did a master plan here. It was accepted and implemented. It's time to do another one. Is another one Could in the be. plans? Uh, at this time, I don't, I, don't, I don't think we have one plan to do one soon. Uh, I could be wrong, but... Um, I'll have to check on that, but I, I don't think we have one mm -hmm. in, in the works right now. 
<laughs> Very good. Okay. Anybody else? I, I do have one thing that I, yeah. I'd like to ask. Go ahead, John. Me and Bob are new. Um, I'd like to know: Could you? Can someone email me the um, the actual committee members? Their their names, numbers, and their emails. Yeah, I can do that tomorrow, John. Okay. Thanks. Can you CC me on that too, please? Yes, mm -hmm. sir. Thank you. Send list of committees. Send it to Bobby D. Also, if you would, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> Send it to everybody. <laughs> okay, good. Uh, hey, folks, I want to interject uh, by saying that uh, as a function of Bonnie leaving, she's been a, a great asset to us for the two times in which she took over as interim town manager. And well, Bonnie, I want you to know that we appreciate you very much. We do appreciate you. Wish you Godspeed again with your mm -hmm. any new adventure that you want. Thank and you. And this is Bobby Dean speaking. Especially on behind the, behind uh, uh, as a function of me being with the town of Glastonbury, and there's always been good things about you there, and I I've had a great relationship with you over the phone here, uh, and uh, I wish you Godspeed. Thank you very much for your help. Thank you. I, I'm ready to go back. <laughs> Understood. Up for the summers only. <laughs> yeah. No kidding. <laughs> All right, gang. Um, is there a motion to adjourn? Motion. Sure, by Bobby D. All right, second. Seconded second. here. All in favor? Aye. 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 Great. Enjoy. Um, enjoy. Thank you, everybody. And Bob, if you want to stop by and see Cheryl, she will teach you how to get on this Zoom. Tell her I will. Right. Hey. Anytime, anytime. Hey. Thank you. That's a nice you. I'll, All right. I'll do that. Okay. okay. Thanks, everybody. Good night, everybody.